Okay, so now I have played with kids that haven't had any rough and tumble play. And it's really hard to play with them, partly because they're, they're, they're easily frightened. You know, they'd like to play. I know how to play with kids. They'd like to play. They're pretty hepped up on it, you know, and they, they're really excited, especially about physical play. But they're awkward, you know, so you play with them, they stick their thumb in your eye, or, you know, or they cry really easily when nothing really happens, and, like, they just don't have it together. A kid that has done a lot of physical interaction, physical playing, that kid, it's a different sort of kid, because the first thing the kid knows, it's not a rule, the first thing the kid knows is, how forceful can he be with you, so that it's exciting and interesting and fun, but it's not too much. And that's really an interesting question, eh? Because actually, to really play a good game, like a physical contact game, like wrestling with a kid, is that you want to let that kid come right up to the edge of hurting you. And the closer the kid gets to the edge, the more fun it is for both. Because the kid will give you a whack and he'll go, <laughs> you know. And, and that's, it's good, you know. And then maybe he'll give you a harder whack to see if he can get away with it. And kids will often, they'll come up to you, whack you and then run away and then they'll look okay? and if you're laughing then they'll come back and try a harder one and then you know they're doing it incrementally because it's exploratory behavior and part of the, the exploration is okay what are bodies like and the answer to that is well what can you get away with doing to them but it's a more sophisticated answer too which is what can you get away with doing to them in a way that allows you to continue to explore without fear or punishment, and without blowing the whole game to bits. Okay, so how do you figure that out? You do not talk about it. Because you can't. You have to act it out. It's like, so, so the kid's hitting you and wrestling and pulling your hair and doing all these things, and you're modifying its behavior very, very carefully and, and, and in minuscule detail, and then you get a kid who can like wrestle like mad, and they're fun to play with. They bounce around like a dog that won't bite you, you know? A good, well-trained dog you can really play with, and you can play with them rough. And it's a blast. The dog has a good time, the person has a good time. It's like, excellent. That's a socialized dog. So, the other thing that kids learn, learns, which is quite cool, is what hurts them and what doesn't, and how afraid can they be and still have fun. So, you know, when you're wrestling with a kid, you put them, you know, you put them face down, you put your elbow on them, you bend them around, you throw them in the air and catch them, you know, you grab them by the leg and maybe you pull them over and, you know, and what you're showing the kid is, here's a bunch of things that your body can do, and it's okay that they're, they're being done. That, it isn't going to hurt you, and you're not talking about it, you're showing them. And so the kid gets kind of confident about what he or she can withstand physically. And the difference between pain and not pain, and the difference between fear and not fear, and when something's threatening and when it's not. It's very sophisticated. It's very sophisticated behavior. And that's partly why kids love to play. Now, one of the things that's happened, which is, you know, an indication of a deep sickness in our society, is that I used to work at a daycare center, eh, when I was about your age, because I really like kids. And they like to play with me because I know how to play with them. And so one of the things I would do with the little kids was I would draw them horrible monsters, right? Like big teeth things on, I'd just sketch them out, they weren't any works of art, you know, but those damn kids, they would line up to get a picture of a monster. Draw me a picture of a monster, draw me a picture of a monster. It's like, they love those little pictures of monsters. So that was pretty funny. And the other thing I would do is play with them, you know, I'd take them out in the yard and grab an arm and a leg and spin them around and bend them over and, you know, twist them around and let them crawl on me. And um, there, was, there was always one kid in the group who couldn't do that though, he's like, he hadn't been paid attention to enough, you know, so he was, I think he was like a Taoist uncarved block. Very vague and ill-defined and clunky. And so, kid like that, you know, you'd sit down, it's so sad. You sit down and you're interacting with the kids and that kid comes along, sort of lumping along, you know, like this. And they plop, you, plop on your lap and they, like, they're about as sophisticated as like a six-month-old, you know. And they're quite annoying, you know, which is a horrible thing because they're so desperate for attention. And it's too late often by the time they're four. It's like, good luck fixing that, man. It's not going to happen. You know, and those kids are just screwed. Because what happens to them is they're so lumpy and ill-formed and, and uncomfortable in their body and socially clueless and inattentive and blind and ignored and resentful that no other kids will play with them. 
And it's no wonder, because the other kids are way the hell up on the play development trend, and so they're bored stiff by them. It's like playing with a nine-month-old, which, which kids will do, you know, but that's not peer play. And so those kids just drift off. They, get, they stay on the outside of the peer group, and they never get into it. They never get into it. So, very, very ugly. And so now in daycare centers, you can't touch the kids. It's like, what the hell? You know, well, why? Well, because you can't distinguish play from molesting. It's like, who can't distinguish that? <laughs> you know, and what are you going to do? You're not going you're to deprive the kids of play because of your stupid paranoia. That's the whole, that's the whole process, right? Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, what you're doing is you're teaching children that adults are so dangerous that they can't be trusted to be near you. That's a lovely thing to teach children, especially because they're going to be adults.